There's something huge that you may have not heard about when it comes to Arsenal Football Club. The day Rhys Nelson scored that last second goal to help them win their game against Bournemouth at home after being 2-0 down, only moments later, 3,000 miles away in New York, they were being given an award. Arsenal analytics team was given an award by MIT at the Sloan Awards. If you're asking yourself, how is it that one of the most prestigious universities in the country came to give Arsenal Football Club a analytics award and how that technology and tool helped them recruit the likes of Gabriel Jesus and Zinchenko, I'm going to answer your questions about this technology in this video. Our story goes back to 2011 when Arsene Wenger was then Arsenal manager. Arsenal had moved into their new stadium, the Emirates, in 2006 and were a project in transition during that time. Their investment in a new stadium and facilities meant they needed to be more clever in the transfer market, leaving less margin of error. During the summer of 2012, Arsenal sold Robin Van Persie and Alex Song to Manchester United and Barcelona. They invested most of their resulting budget on three replacements. Santi Cazorla, Lucas Podolski, and Olivier Giroud. However, not all the money was used directly on, on the playing squad. At that time, Arsenal wanted to take a longer term view by investing in redeveloping the Colony training ground and getting access to better analytics. Arsenal then started engaging with a company called StatDNA. StatDNA was providing talent identification and tactical insights on a consultancy basis for a fee of $250,000. Their data was used for match preparation, performance monitoring, and injury prevention. In 2012, Arsenal purchased StatDNA for £2 million and integrated it into their footballing structure. The founder, Jason Rosenfold, became one of Arsene Wenger's key advisors and became the head of Arsenal's analytics. Now here are some examples of how the technology works. Number one. It identifies the most effective attacking pattern by analyzing player movements and passing patterns. Second, it pinpoints defensive weaknesses of opponents through the analysis of player positioning and decision making. Three, understanding the player's strengths and weaknesses to help with the selection process of different matches. Four, analyzing opponent tendencies by studying the performance data and identifying patterns. Five, evaluating set piece effectiveness by identifying which set piece strategy is most effective against an opponent. After Arsenal purchased that DNA, it was integrated into the club and rebranded Arsenal Data Analytics. Prior to a match against an opponent, Arsene Wenger would receive a 20 page dossier. Arsenal Data Analytics was key in the recommendation and evaluation and recruitment of Gabriel Jesus, as the data labeled him as one of the best pressing forwards in world football. One of the ways Arsenal was able to convince Jesus to sign for them and not Chelsea or Real Madrid was to present him with key stats and metrics in which they felt Jesus was underperforming. The club did not simply present the forwards failings and issues, but rather a plan to help improve them. This was one of the key reasons he signed for Arsenal. The analytics also recommended the signing of Martinez of Manchester United due to his off the charts metrics on distribution stats. From that failure came three recommendations from the data. Aaron Hickey of Bologna, Sergio Gomez of Anderlecht, and Zinchenko of Manchester City. Due to Arteta's familiarity with Zinchenko and his knowledge of the Premier League, he was the obvious choice. This data is also utilized by Arsenal when they send players out on loan. Marseille was required to provide constant, up-to-date information on defender William Saliba during his loan last season. This data helped inform Arteta to rely on the young Frenchman in the forthcoming campaign. In addition to recruitment, the data extends to injury management. The club was able to use data analytics to reduce injury risks and enhance players' physical performance through a process that centers around five key areas. Cardiovascular, metabolical, neuromuscular, physiological, skeletal stress. These individual categories are then given a score of one through five. A score is then approximated through an algorithm made up of 75 different variables of data. Arsenal would then plot the player's story using three stages, overworked, stressed, or facing, 
potential fatigue. This would then categorize it into three different groups, protect, maintain, increase. Since the Cronkies took over the club in 2018, the data has allowed them to make real-time analysis and push through prospective players. Data cannot tell the whole story, but it paints a decent picture. Through artificial intelligence and machine learning, data can now be aggregated and analyzed in real time. Arsenal is able to be more nimble and gain a competitive advantage over their peers. Now let me know what you guys think about artificial intelligence and machine learning in, in the world of football going forward. Thank you for watching.